What are the creepiest urban legends from every state? From haunted playgrounds and roads, to cursed cities, and even the devil's chair itself. Let's talk about them. What's going down, Mouse Nation? Today is the first part of a five-part series of the creepiest urban legends from every state. This is, of course, in the United States of America. We'll be doing these in alphabetical order, so make sure you give us a shout out when your state comes up and let us know what your favorite local urban legend is. And if you're from another country, we have not forgotten about you, so make sure you let us know some from your country as well in the comments below. Now, all of these are super creepy, so with no further ado, sit back, turn out the lights, and let's get started. Alabama, Dead Children's Playground. Imagine this, you're walking through a cemetery, visiting your loved ones, when suddenly you hear children's laughter just around the corner. You're startled to hear this in such a somber place. Well, this is normal in Alabama's largest and oldest cemetery. Its name, Maple Hill Cemetery. But it also has another name, the Dead Children's Playground. At the end of the cemetery sits Maple Hill Park, a children's playground. This playground was put in in order to accommodate small children who are accompanying their families as they mourn their loved ones. But of course now it's become a favorite paranormal hotspot for ghost hunters and bored teens. Supposedly in the 1960s, there was a string of small children's disappearances with even a small skull being found in the quarry behind the cemetery. Sadly, the murderer and many of the children were never found, but their funerals did take place there in the Maple Hill Cemetery, bringing the urban legend to life. It's been said that balls of cold ghost lights float within the park. Ghost children can be seen running around at midnight and the swings are known to sway on their own throughout the day. So remember this before you decide to take that stroll at midnight because they may just be looking for a new friend to play with. Alaska Kushtaka. Move over Bigfoot. There's a new beast in town. The Kushtaka, which means the Land Otter Man, is a Native American urban legend that spans generations. More specifically, he lives through the folklore of the Lingit and the Shimshin, peoples of the Northwestern United States. The Kushtaka are shapeshifters who can also take the shape of humans as well. Now what makes these guys creepy? Nothing can be cuter than a giant otter, right? Well, it's said that one of their favorite pastimes is striking sailors to their deaths. They will even imitate the cries and screams of babies, women, and children. And they do this in order to lure their victims to the river. And once the Kushtaka has them in their arms, they'll do one of two things. Either shred the person to pieces or turn them into a Kushtaka as well. These monsters give off their position by emitting a high-pitched whistle, so don't wander too close to the water alone. Arizona, Slaughterhouse Canyon. It's the 1800s. The gold rush has sent people rushing west to find their piece of the pie. And one of these families lived at the bottom of Luana's Canyon, the very same canyon that is now known as Slaughterhouse Canyon. But why? How did it get such a fear-inducing name? Well, the story behind it is both heartbreaking and terrifying. When the gold began to dry up, the family became very poor. The father would leave, sometimes weeks at a time, looking for food for his family. Then one day, he didn't make it home. His family would eventually starve, and then madness would descend upon them and their home. The mother could no longer stand hearing her children's screams and begging for food as they starved. She would then put on her white wedding dress and murder them, eventually throwing them into a nearby river and then succumbing to starvation herself. And the thing about canyons is that when someone yells or screams, 
It can be heard through a long distance. And to this day, it's said that you can still hear the echoes of the children's screams throughout Slaughterhouse Canyon. Even more terrifying is that the mother is still there haunting the canyon, waiting for her children to come back to her. Who knows, you might even catch a glimpse. Arkansas, the dog boy. Well, what makes this urban legend absolutely creepy is the fact that it's true. The dog boy of Quitman. A couple had a son back in the 1950s in Quitman, Arkansas. This young boy was named Gerald and he was tough to deal with from the start. He was evil and cruel, eventually gaining the name dog boy because he would collect stray cats and of course dogs. But it's not as sweet as it sounds. He would then go on to torture and kill these poor animals. As he grew older, his intentions would become more and more malicious, adding on to his home so that he could have more of these creatures at his disposal. He'd go on to imprison his own parents in their upstairs room, many believing that he threw his father down the stairs to his death. He was known to beat and torture his mother as well. Even more terrifying is the fact that Gerald and his father both haunt that home to this day. One looking to torture those who go into the home, the other looking to protect them. California, Turnbull Canyon. Now, as many of you know, I'm currently living in Cali and this place is not far from where I live. So if you want me to check it out, make sure you let us know in the comments below. Now, Turnbull Canyon is a four mile hike near Puente Hills and Whittier. It's a really beautiful area here in California overall. But here's the thing, it's a really haunted paranormal hotspot. From native legends to a former asylum, even black eyed kids, you'll see why this place is so frightening. And it begins centuries ago. The Native Americans actually have a name for this place, Kutugna, which translates to the dark place. So dark in fact that these natives consider these grounds to be forbidden and cursed. So cursed that they won't even go near them. Many ancestors of these natives were slaughtered by the Spanish trying to convert them to Catholicism. The Spanish believed that by facing their fears, they would see and come to the one true faith. Instead, the natives would seemingly give up as they spent time within Turnbull Canyon, the dark place. To this day, many hikers can feel the gaze of hundreds of these natives watching them as they walk near a water tower. Fast forward to the Great Depression, where groups of hooded people in black robes would perform rituals within the canyon on a nightly basis, even supposedly strapping children to crosses as they chanted. They said that these cultists would then turn the crosses upside down and begin to do cruel things to the children. Their victims would never be seen again after being tossed into bags and thrown away. This was of course paired with a rash of disappearances in the area. And as if that wasn't enough, there was also an insane asylum in Turnbull Canyon in the 1930s. This asylum would eventually burn down and former patients are said to still roam the trails and watch out for the black eyed kids. So if you think that you're gonna go for a hike in Turnbull Canyon, make sure it's still light out. Colorado, Riverdale Road. We could do an entire episode on Riverdale Road in Thornton, Colorado. From Native American shapeshifters who roam the area to a ghostly Camaro that may just try and challenge you to a race to the death. A lady in white also seeks anyone who's willing to give her a ride, but she'll disappear as she opens the passenger door, leaving you terrified and alone. When a full moon is out, slaves are said to be seen still hanging from the trees. And even a young boy who was killed in an accident leaves his bloody handprints all over street signs, 
that mysteriously disappear by morning. Satanic cults still leave headless animals on the sides of the road, and you may see the spirit of an angry jogger who was killed on the road. Or of course, there's the most famous urban legend in the area, the Gates of Hell. Giant rusted gates that are said to be a beacon for the rest of these spirits and entities. Many are even said to be connected to a mansion that was once built there. It's said that the owner of the mansion went crazy one night and burnt down his home, leaving his family within it and disappearing, never to be seen again. Is his wife the lady in white who roams this area, searching for help that'll never come? We may never know. Connecticut, Dudley Town. Dudley Town wasn't really a town. More of an area in the town of Cornwall that was owned by the Dudley family. Now supposedly the Dudley family were descendants of an English nobleman who would eventually be beheaded for treason. The family would then be forever cursed. That same curse following them all the way from England to the New World. This brings us to Dudley Town in Connecticut, also known as the Village of the Damned. The area would be plagued with crop failures, mysterious deaths, disappearances, suicides, and downright bad luck. This string of bad luck, or should we say curse, caused Dudley Town to become a ghost town. Today, it's almost impossible to explore the ruins of the old town as the landowners got tired of trespassers vandalizing their property. But could that just be a cover? Or are they just simply trying to protect us from something more sinister? Delaware, corpse light. A mysterious ghost light that comes from midair in Cape Henlopen where no lighthouse sits? This phantom light is said to be a curse from the natives of the area. They gave this curse after British soldiers murdered many of their people at a wedding ceremony. The curse's purpose? To lead the British to their doom. It would eventually sink the Devonshire men on Christmas in 1665, killing over 200 men. And on some nights, if you're unlucky, you may even get to see this ghost ship reenact that terrible night. Florida, the devil's chair. In a cemetery full of spiritualists and psychics sits a large brick chair near one of the graves. This chair belongs to none other than the Prince of Darkness himself. Yes, this is the devil's chair. The town is Casadega, and legend has it that if you sit upon his chair at midnight, you can speak to Satan himself. And for those he deems worthy, he may even sit by your side. To have a little fun, leave him a beer overnight. And when you return in the morning, it'll either be open or gone. Either way, I'm not really sure I'd enjoy having a conversation with the devil himself, would you? Georgia, the ghost town of Lake Lanier. A summer hotspot for families to visit and enjoy. Lake Lanier has a lot of unique qualities to it. One of them including a curse. The lake is man-made by the US Army Corps of Engineers and its creation seems to have been cursed from the beginning. Families were displaced and cemeteries relocated just to make the project happen. Eventually a dam broke before the towns below could be totally demolished and in the murky waters sits an entire town. Roads and homes, an entire ghost town, emerged within the lake itself. Almost 700 people have perished at the lake, some never to be found. Others who've survived said they felt hands pulling them below the water to join them in their watery graves. Ghostly boats and specters around the lake at night, and if I were you, I'd head to Florida instead. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of The Creepiest here with me, Morty Mouse. Which legend scares you the most? Are there any that you'd like to share? Let us know in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. As always, I'm your host, Morty Mouse. I'll see you later, 
or I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. <laughs>